everyone, this is Ashley with Marsh Flower Studio. In this video, I am going to be making my tiny T-Rex again. Um, I had quite a few comments that it was kind of hard to see some of the things I was doing with the darker color. So today I'm going to be using this nice bright, let's see what color is this, <laughs> Robin's Egg. Alright, so hopefully that'll make this a little bit easier. And... There were a couple places where a few people had questions. They didn't quite understand what I was doing. Um, I think it was like in the tail section. So I'm going to make sure I go nice and slow during that part so you guys can make sure you can follow along. Um, remember to like and share and subscribe. All that good stuff. Um, all of those. Just let me know that you guys enjoy the videos, comment if you have questions. I will try to work on them as fast as I can. <laughs> um, I do have a lot going on, so sometimes it's longer than I would like in between when I get comments and questions and when I can get back to them. Um, so, with that in mind, I will start working on our little tiny T-Rex dude here. Um, my Yarn is just a worsted weight number four. Like I said, this one's Robin's egg. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> mm. Oh, year round allergies are awesome. Um, and I am using my four millimeter hook because this is my go-to hook uh, with this size yarn when I'm making any of these what I consider keychain size um, animals just makes them a little tighter and I feel like they hold up a little bit better uh, when I use the smaller hook. If you want them to be a little larger and perhaps a little bit squishier uh, from the get-go then obviously you know a little bit larger hook. Um, is fine for that. I do have a video where I show the difference between using different hook sizes with the same yarn and the same pattern. Um, <coughs> oh my goodness, okay. Um, just so you can really see how much of a difference it makes. So it was the exact same yarn, the exact same pattern. The only thing that changed was I was using like a four millimeter hook and a five millimeter hook. So not even that big of a difference in hook size, but there's a noticeable difference in the size of the body that I was making. So if you're curious, make sure you watch that video. Um, there will be a link at the bottom of this video in the description for the pattern on Etsy. So if you would like to have a visual printed version uh, to kind of help follow along, that is there as well. So, all right, we're going to start with our top of the head. Um, this is work from the head down. And this one starts with a chain six. So I'm going to make my slip knot. And however you make a slip knot is fine. One of the things I try to make sure I teach people who are just learning, there are different ways to do some of the things in crochet. And either way is totally fine. As long as you get the same end result, it doesn't matter if you hold your hook this way, which is I think what they call the knife hold, or if you use a pencil hold and hold it this way, um, you're still crocheting, right? So while you may have a slight difference in size or texture, it's really not going to make that much of a difference, okay? And then there's always the yarn over versus yarning under. <laughs> There's a whole big debate about that. Um, so whichever way you're comfortable with is completely fine. Okay. All right. So we have our slip knot. We're going to chain six. So one, two, three, 
four, five, and six. Then in the second chain from the hook, so here's one and here's two, we're going to do a single crochet just through that top loop there. So there's my single crochet. And then we're gonna do three more single crochets. So same thing, that top loop up there. One, two, three. All right, so then in this last chain here, we're gonna do three single crochets in the same spot. So there's one, two, and three, and it kind of curves around the end of this chain, okay? Then we're gonna do three more single crochets up this other side of our initial chain six. And where your yarn kind of comes down to a point here, that's where we're gonna put our hook to stick it through, okay? So three more single crochets. So there's one, two, and three. So there's one more spot here to work into this chain. And in that spot, we're gonna do two single crochets. So we have a regular increase. Just make sure that you're going into that part of the chain and not the stitch on the other side. Okay. So there's one and two. I used to always get stuck because I would end up covering up this first single crochet when I would do that. And then my row would be off and it would start to like twist the wrong way. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, so for our next row, we are working in the round and we're not joining rows. We're just continuing around our circle. In that first stitch for this next row, we're gonna put an increase. So two single crochets. So there's one and two. And we're gonna do three single crochets up the side. One, two, Three. We're gonna have three increases on this end. So there's one and two. In the next stitch we have three and four. And the next we have five and six. All right. Then we have three single crochets up this side. One, two, three and then two increases. So one and two, and then three and four. And if you're fairly new to crocheting, I highly recommend using a stitch marker. Um, I use these large bobby pins or hair pins um, because they slide in place really easily. They don't just fall off. I'm not trying to pinch and squeeze something um, like a safety pin in there. And when you need to move them, you can slip them off and you're good. Some of the stitch markers that I've worked with are just aggravating to me. So I like these. You can buy lots of them for very cheap. <laughs> um, and they work great. Okay, so moving on to row three. Uh, we're just going to have 18 single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 
15, 16, 17, and 18. So we want to make sure that our outside is outside and not curling in. And our next row, row four, we're going to have six single crochets first. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And we're going to have three decreases. So the way I do decreases, and this is different for everybody, there are different ways to do it. Whichever way you do a decrease, totally fine. I go under the front loop of that very next stitch and then under the front loop of the stitch after that. Okay, so I've got technically three loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through those first two. So then I have two loops on my hook. And I'm going to yarn over and pull through those two. And that creates my single crochet that pulls both of those stitches together. Okay, so we're doing three of those. There's one. We'll do another decrease. Two. And another decrease is three. And the happy tornado toddlers <laughs> aren't having the best afternoon right now. So I apologize for that. All right, so we're gonna have six more single crochets to finish out this row. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. So then our next row, row five, we're going to have four single crochets to start with. So there's one, two, three, and four. And we're going to have three decreases. <coughs> There's one, two, and three. Okay. And then five more single crochets to finish out the row. So one, two, three, four, and five. All right, so if you want to have safety eyes on your little T-Rex, um, now is the time that I would recommend doing that. And the best place I have found for them is just between rows two and three. So it kind of puts them right up here near the top. I kind of prefer to just do little sewn on eyes with these little guys because I go through a lot of eyes. <laughs> so if I can get away with things like this, not having the safety eyes, then that's what I typically do. All right, so I'm gonna tuck my little starter tail up here in the nose and then we'll move on to row six. So row six is just 12 single crochets. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. All right. So for row seven, uh, we are going to be doing a repeat. So we're going to have three single crochets and then an increase and it's going to take us to 15 stitches total for this row. All right. So one, two, three, and then four, five in the same hole because that's our increase. And six, seven, eight and then we're putting nine and ten in the same hole as our increase and then eleven twelve thirteen 
and then 14 and 15 in the same hole as our last increase. All right. Next, we're going to have four and increase, and we're going to repeat that three times. So there's one, two, three, four. And we'll have five, six as our increase here. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and then we'll have eleven and twelve as our increase, and then thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen, eighteen as our increase there at the end. All right, now. We're going to do two single crochets and then an increase. And this will take us up to 24 total stitches for row nine. So we have one and two, and then three and four. We have five and six as our increase, and then seven, eight. 9, 10 is our increase, 11, 12, 13, 14 is our increase, 15, 16, 17, 18 is our increase, 19, 20, 21, 22 is our increase, and then 23. 24. Alrighty. So <clears throat> in our next row, we're going to have just 24 single crochets. Nice and easy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. All right. So at this point, <clears throat> I'm going to put a little bit of stuffing up in the head, just because I don't like to wait until the very end and then try to figure out how to get it up in there. Especially with some of these smaller things that have bendy necks or bendy tails, trying to make sure that that's stuffed appropriately when you're done uh, can be tricky. So make sure you do stuff that a little early so that it is done and you don't have to worry about it all right so in our next step we're going to be starting the tail of our little t-rex here and depending on the hooks the yarn how you crochet how tight your tension is um can kind of control a lot of things about where uh, the start and stop points kind of move to. And if you've ever done things like this before, you know that as you crochet your work, you know, your start point could be over here, and by the time you're done, your start point's down here. Um, just because of the increases, the decreases, and the stitches don't always line up like straight on top of each other. They kind of stagger back just a little bit every time you go. So at this point, we need to make sure that we are in the center of our back. So I'm going to add one more single crochet to make sure that I am straight in the very back of my dinosaur here. Okay, so you can fold it in half to kind of just make sure. If you're already there, then don't add any stitches. If you are over here somewhere, then take one or two out 
to make sure that you are lined up with just the center of the back, okay? So for row 11, <coughs> like I said, we need to make sure we're lined up with the center of the back. We're going to do five, chain 5 from this point. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, okay? So then in the second chain from the hook, we're going to do a single crochet. All right. And then we're going to do three more single crochets. So one, two, three. We go up this chain back towards the body. All right. And then we're going to do a decrease kind of in here where we started this chain. So where I put this last stitch in the body, I'm going to go through there and pull up a loop. And then I'm going to use that next stitch to grab my other loop for my decrease. And what this does is it closes this hole where the chain comes back to the body. Okay, that's all I did. So if you don't want to try to figure that out, then just make sure that you do a single crochet in that next stitch over, and you might have to come back in and do a little uh, loop around to close in that gap. But I do that decrease where I use the stitch from where I started my tail and that very next stitch to just kind of close that up as I'm going. All right, so then after our decrease, we're going to have seven single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we're going to have four decreases. So again, front loops only one. two, three, and then four, and then eight single crochets, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. So you should be at the base of the tail, or at the end of that row, and we're going to do two single crochets up the side of the tail, and then we're going to decrease on the end of the tail, and then come back down, okay? And this seems a little bit weird. So there's one, and two, and then because this is kind of a weird angle, I'm going to pull up a loop under that first stitch, and then I'm going to pull up a loop under the second stitch. Okay, so then I'll just pull through all three to kind of create that single crochet there, that decrease. So I'm going to do that again. So it's another way to decrease. All right, so that kind of gives me that point on the end of the tail, doing those two decreases there. So then we'll do two more single crochets to come back up that side of the tail. And then we have six single crochets that will carry us on around the body. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we'll have four decreases. So one, two, three, and four. 
So then we have six more single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and six. I think I've got some sleepy toddlers in there. Okay, so then for row 13, our first step is going to be three decreases. So we're kind of closing in and pulling together the back of this tail section. So I'll do one, two, and three. And then we'll have two single crochets and a decrease that we'll repeat four times to get back around to the beginning of this row. So there's one, two, and then decrease on three, and two. And there's our second one. One, two, decrease, there's our third, and one, two, decrease, and there's our fourth. Okay, so then for row 14, we're going to have seven decreases. Seven. And then make sure you get them stuffed. You can lightly stuff them or stuff them a little bit more firm. I tend to go a little more firm. Um, because as they are pulled on and played with and tossed around, they will soften up over time. Make sure you get a little bit kind of in that tail area. It's not really big enough to really stuff any in there, so make sure you get a little bit. All right, so then my very last step is just one more decrease. If you wanna do two more, that's totally fine. I'm gonna do a little slip stitch here to kind of finish this off. And I will close up this hole in the bottom. So we're doing from the outside towards the inside under the front loop only, if you've never done this kind of invisible close method before. It's a really nice finish. So I'm just going to go all the way around, front loop only, from the outside to the inside. The reason we do front loop only is because if we did both, it would kind of have too much yarn there and it creates more of a pucker. So if you do front loop only, it pushes those back loops in when you pull this tight and it doesn't try to contain them um, in this little circle here. So I'm going to take and push this yarn tail up towards the front, a nice finish there. And I'm going to leave that for just a minute. So we have our head and our body. Okay. So we got to do our arms and our legs. They're super simple. All right, so for our arms, we're going to have a magic circle. 
And in our magic circle, we're going to do a five stitch puff. Okay. Some people call them bobble stitches, some call them puffs, some call them popcorn. I personally have never quite figured out what the difference is. I know one of them you have to take your hook out and do something and then put it back and that's a little confusing for me. So we're going to do like a double crochet into our magic circle. We're going to pull through the first two loops and then we're going to leave that like this. So we're going to do that four more times. So yarn over, down through the middle, back up through the first two that are on the hook. So now I have three loops on there. Okay. And we'll do it again. There's number three. We have number four. And number five. Okay. So we have... <coughs> Sorry, thought I was all done. We have our starting loop here, and then we have one, two, three, four, five loops from our creating our puff. So we're gonna yarn over and pull through all five, okay? And then we're gonna yarn over again, just do a little chain to close that in, all right? So you can trim this off, you need a little bit of tail so you can use that to sew it to the body and then we're just going to close in our magic circle here so we just have this nice little puff all by itself so this is one of the arms and we'll sew that you can sew it horizontal or you can sew it vertical whichever way you think is cutest I usually do vertical, just because to me it's almost like his little fingers are going like this, trying to grab something. I love T-Rexes because they have tiny arms. Alright, so that's his arm, and I'll do the other one in a minute. I'm going to do a leg first, and the leg is done the same way. I just use seven of the double crochets um, to make it just a little bit fuller. Okay, so we have our magic circle. We're going to do our double and our first two loops. So there's one. We have two. Three. Four. Five. Six. And seven. Okay, so we have our starter loop down here. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we're going to yarn over and pull through all of them. And then we'll do one little chain there to kind of cinch that in. And then we will close. We'll close our magic circle to pull in the bottom. And then we've got our foot. Okay, so we'll trim that off. Again, you need just enough to kind of sew it to the body. So we've got our hand, our little arm over here, and then our little feet will be horizontal right down underneath there. Okay, so I'm going to sew these in place before I make my other two. And while I'm working on this, um, you can scale this little dude. Um, you just have to think about yarn size and hook size, right? So if you use a bulkier yarn, and a larger hook, you're going to get some bigger, um, I do feel like if you get to a certain point too big, then it's just going to look like a really big, funny, 
chicken nugget. But if that's what you're going for, then by all means, make you some chicken nuggets. So just a couple stitches through there. And I'm going through that kind of top chain where I closed it off and the magic circle on the other side just to make sure I'm providing plenty of stuff for this string to hold on to here. And then I will tie this off. I usually do a little square knot and then I'll take my ends here, feed them down through my T-Rex. If I don't have to weave in ends, I typically don't. You can still do this and weave them in. I just get to a point in most projects that I'm kind of like, and I'm done. <laughs> this is why I don't make blankets as much. The back and forth rows drive me crazy. Alright, so here's a foot. It's going to go right down here. And there's not like a secret row that I try to put these on. Um... I tend to just kind of go for what looks best with these guys. So if you think it looks better to have it more on the side or more underneath, farther back, um, it's completely up to you. All right, I'm not going to come attack you in the craft store and say, Oh my gosh, you destroyed my little dinosaur by putting his feet in the wrong place. Not gonna happen. Alright. Tie this one off as well. Put these in. Back through. Okay. So, from the side, here is our little T-Rex. And with the other foot under there, he will stand. Right? So I'll get those done in just a minute and get those attached. Um, I hope this was a little easier to see so that you could follow along. Um, again, if you have questions, let me know. I'll see if I can figure out how to help. Um, and also, if you would like to have the written version, um, Check that description box for the link to the Etsy page where you can purchase that and download it. Um, and again, if you have any questions or hard time figuring that out, let me know. Um, and my email is on the bottom of the Etsy pattern page. So you can also just email me um, if you have questions on that. So... I'm going to finish his other little legs, put some little eyes in here for him, and then he will be all done. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you have not already. And as my shameful plug-in, or shameless plug-in, yeah, shameless, um, I do have my Etsy page, um, Marsh Flower Studio, I have Facebook and Instagram where I post pictures of things that I'm making all the time. Those are at Marsh Flower Studio as well. Um, and I have a website where I sell a lot of the things that I make. And that one is themarshflower.com. So you can check that out. There's a gallery page on the website with lots of things that I've made in the past. Um, inspiration 
fun color combinations. Um, so take a look at that. There's also things that are currently for sale on there. Um, I do sell locally in a couple different places. So if you're in the Savannah area and would like to see some of them, reach out, let me know. I'll tell you where you can go check some of them out. So with that being said, I'm going to finish my little T-Rex and then I will be all done for the day with my work. <laughs> Um, all right, let's see, let's make another arm here. One, two, three, four. Five. My tiny tornado is like watching Miss Rachel. She's talking about the teddy bear taking slow and steady breaths when they get frustrated. That's funny because my toddlers are in there talking about the teddy. It's just super cute when I can hear them talk about stuff and they don't realize that I'm paying attention. Because like most kids, they don't want you to know that they can say things. My oldest, that's 11, frequently tries to get away with not speaking and still get what she wants, which doesn't get very far in this house. I have to remind her that I'm not a mind reader. But she definitely acts like she is already a teenager. Oh. Okay, this side of this little arm is driving me nuts. There we go. Two little arms. So we'll tie this off. So there's my two little arms. Trim that off. I like to trim my yarn, trim my yarn ends as soon as I'm done with them. Otherwise, I've got all kinds of floppy stuff hanging all over the place. It just starts to get frustrating in the way. That one's there because I meant to tie it off with this foot and forgot. So, there's our seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll pull through all of them. And then we will. Close up our magic circle.
Alright, this little foot's gonna go right here. Okay, tie this off, I've got both the tails from the foot and that leftover tail from closing the body, so those are all tied together there. Push these through. We'll feed them out through the back. Okay. So that is our little T-Rex. Happy little friend. He's definitely one of the favorites for some of the stores and craft fairs that I go to. So some eyes. If you wanted to add like a little spike ridge down his back, um, you could surface crochet it. I'm not super fond of doing that. It's just frustrating for me. Um, so you could also do a chain that just goes, you know, from wherever you want it to start on the top of his head down as far as you want it to go to his tail. Um, and then I typically will just do a slip stitch and pico kind of every other to give a little bit of a texture back here. So if you want to give him a little spike back here that's the easiest way to do it that kind of chain with the pico stitches and then just sew it to him um, or you can surface crochet the same thing as well but that is our little tiny t-rex dude and happy hooking crochet nerds <laughs>